Hi, everybody. It's Thursday afternoon, and I spent some time two days ago looking into the updated status of where our El Nino this winter is, what it's projected to be for the remainder of winter into early spring, what that means for our uh, for our forecast outlook. I'm meteorologist Rod Hill, and I hope you'll find this interesting. So check this out. So the last week, the El Nino is measured to be a full two degrees Celsius above normal surface water temperatures out in the equatorial waters of the Pacific off the coast of South America. That is not only a strong El Nino, that is a super strong El Nino, what they call literally the classification is super El Nino. So again, to refresh your memory, here's South America. Here you can see, this is an old image, but it gets the job done. You can see the plume of red. That's warmer than above normal surface water temperatures in this equatorial water belt of the Pacific off the coast of South America. So that's what we're measuring. If this were below normal, it would be La Nina. But right now, it's two full degrees Celsius above normal. Now, we're not sure if that's going to hold for the entire monthly December average, but we'll know that in just a few days, obviously. So a reminder, to be classified as El Nino, you have to be a half a degree to, to 0.9 degrees Celsius above normal water temperature. Moderate is a full full degree Celsius to almost one and a half. A strong, which is where the, pro the projection for the El Nino was to be somewhere in this plus 1.4 to maybe plus 1.8. That was the projected moderate to strong El Nino when I did my winter outlook back in October and early November. We have now gone above that into this plus two degree territory. And if the average holds long enough, then we will have a period of time this winter where the classification goes super El Nino. So what does that mean? Well, let's let's get into this. First off, uh, again, here is the updated plume of water off the coast of South America. Here in white, that's this is South America. Here you can see Central America, Mexico is up here. So here's Central America. America. Here's the equator. Notice how this plume of warm water basically splits the equator and these enclosed contours sprinkled throughout. There's another one right there. All a full two degrees Celsius above normal. So again, this is classified as a super El Nino. And guess what? We haven't had these El Ninos be this strong that often. Keep in mind, we started to keep track. And by we, I mean NOAA. NOAA and the National Weather Service started to keep historical data on El Nino, La Nina, or neutral phases, the ENSO cycle, in 1950. So since that time, here's what we have. There's only five of them. So it's possible we're going to carry this plus two degree average long enough that this will be considered a portion of this winter as a super El Nino. We'll see. Um, and so far, what's this done? Well, so far, it's produced a December mean temperature average. That's the high and the low, the average for the entire 24-hour period out at PDX in Portland of just more than four and a half degrees Fahrenheit above normal. That's off the charts warm. Keep in mind my winter outlook back in October, early November projected this month would be 4.5 degrees above normal, really warm. So far this month, we've had 8.34 inches of rainfall, really wet. Normally it's closer to five point, I think the average is 5.77. So we're well above that. Now, if you've watched my winter outlook, I spent a great deal of time talking about the last time we had a super El Nino, and that was not that long ago, 2015-16. That was 2.6 degrees above normal Celsius for the months of December, January, and February. It, again, it's the three-month periods that we really do averages on to historically catalog these El Nino, La Nina neutral cycles. Now, that particular December, which I made a big deal about in my outlook, and I'll, I'll show you in a moment came in to be three degrees above normal Fahrenheit. Now, so far, this, this December is going to be warmer than that. That December also produced the historic 15.24 inches of total rainfall. That was the wettest month Portland has ever had. It's still number one. So while we're not going to be that wet, we're currently at 8.34, and we could at least get close to nine inches. I don't think we're going to make nine inches, but we have a run to do it, technically. So still well above normal, just not as wet as we were December 15. But I think you'll agree with me when I say that December 2015 turned out to be a pretty good guide for this December that we're in, both really warm, really wet. The other seasons, by the way, since 1950, the Super El Nino winter season of 97, 98, the one of 1982 to 1983, 
and the one of 1965 to 1966. So again, we've only done this five times since 1950. It doesn't pop up that much. So that the limited, there's limited data because I've only got five years to do comparisons. Here's a graphic from my winter outlook that I shared back around the 1st of November. And again, we, we talked about this record 15.24 inches of rain back in December of 2015. And because of that month and some other pieces of data, but largely because of December 2015, my outlook, I said, there's no confidence to say that we're going to have a dry winter season. Remember El Nino, if you do the averages, and it's what the stereotype is tagged to, the average El Nino comes in below normal total precipitation, but not all of them. And it's interesting that there continue to be, and we've done it again, there continue to be these spike months in El Ninos where it's just crazy wet. And because of that, I said, well, precip is a wild card. You can't say it's going to be dry. You can't say it's going to be wet. You can't say it's going to be normal because there's a decent chance we'll have one of these really wet months. We're having it right now. So all, all pretty interesting stuff that is, has turned out to be pretty accurate. Um, here's a look from uh, NOAA and the National Weather Service of where we are in El Nino right now. So uh, this orange color is El Nino confidence. So basically 100% confidence El Nino is going to be continuing here are the months in the three month cycles through January, February, March. Still 90% plus confidence. We're in El Nino for the three month cycle of February, March, April. And now we start the weekend. This is March, April, May, still showing decent confidence above 70% that we're in a weakened state of El Nino. But by the time we get into the three months of April, May, June, average together, now we're getting into mid to late spring. This shows that the confidence favors La, um, El Nino being over, and this gray is back into a neutral cycle. This shows over 70% confidence we're in a neutral cycle for May, June, July, and it keeps us in a neutral cycle for June, July, August, but look what's happening. The blue is a return to a La Nina. So by the time we get to July, August, September, La Nina seems to be building, and at some point going into the fall months of next year, if nothing changes, projected to overtake uh, neutral, and we will be back into a La Nina season perhaps for the next winter season. Still lots of time for that to change. That confidence is not awfully high right now. I will tell you that most, there's only been five of them, but the majority of super El Ninos, I think three out of five, were in fact followed by La Nina winters. So maybe that turns out to be the case again. Here's a different way to look at what we just looked at. So I'm looking at, these are different weather models projecting the, the temperature departure and whether we're going to be at El Nino, La Nina, or neutral, okay? So here's zero. So right now we're in, what, December. So everything is well up here in this 1.5 to 2 point or even higher mode for a strong to super strong El Nino. Now the one, the model overall, the model average that's most accurate, look at the key, is this dynamic average. What does that mean? Dynamic average means you're doing more than just taking straight stats from past and and factoring in present, but you're looking at computer modeling as well. So this dynam dynamic model right now is the most accurate. It shows us right about two. It shows us actually at 1.9, but pretty close. So let's follow this one. This one takes us all the way down to a zero departure, which should be right in the bullseye of neutral during the months of May, June, and July. Once we get to plus four or less, less than half a degree positive of water temperature departures will technically be in a neutral zone. This keeps us in neutral June, July, August, but now we're into La Nina. Once we hit minus five, now we're in La Nina territory into August, September, October. So again, that's just a different way to look at what that last graphic showed us. So um, what does all this mean, right? It's got to mean something. <laughs> so here's what makes sense to me for January upcoming. I think we're going to continue to see above normal temperatures, but it's not going to be the wacky warm. I've mentioned before, remember right now we are what? Right about still five degrees, rounding up, still about five degrees above normal mean temperature. Anytime you get a departure of three, either plus three or minus three or greater, that's significant in the climate world. And you really notice that's, wow, it's really warm or plus three or wow, it's really colder than normal or minus three. So next month, I have us not as noticeably above normal. I take us down to plus one to plus two degrees Fahrenheit. 
So that would not be a cold January, but it would be close, a lot closer to normal than what we're now experiencing. I take the precipitation down closer to normal to maybe as little as 4.50. Normal January, uh, I should have all this memorized, shouldn't I? Normal January is 5.03. So we, we have the potential to be pretty close to normal. I think we'll average a little bit below. But you figure right now we're running what? Three, degree, uh, three inches or more above normal. So that's definitely going to be a lot drier pattern than the one we're in right now, okay? Now, interesting, what, what happened to January 2016? This was the January following that December of 15. That's turned out to be a great kind of guidance for us, right? So that January, that super El Nino year, came in to be not as warm as December at plus 1.2 degree Fahrenheit. So that's kind of in the same wheelhouse that I'm projecting for next month. Interesting. Precipitation went on to be Still pretty wet, 7.23, more than two inches above normal. I don't see us being that wet, but I will tell you there's probably a better chance of us being above normal than below normal overall. I just, when I look at the number of things I looked at a couple of days ago, I think we are going to be normal to slightly below normal, if that makes sense. So we'll see. But there's certainly no signs we're just going to go really dry. And then what happened the next month, February of 2016? The warmest February we've ever seen. It was 5.5 .5 degrees, five and a half Fahrenheit above normal. It turned out to be a warmer month in terms of departure average than what this December is going to be. So what does that really tell you? That really tells you there's still absolutely no signs of any prolonged stretches to cold weather the remainder of this winter. Now, with that said, a lot of you watched my last video. Maybe you watched it because of my headline. January 6th, January 7th, finally some low snow levels over the Cascades, dropping snow levels down to at least 2,000 feet. Still too far out to make a call if there's going to be a surface feature that would cool some of that cold weather down low and give us some wintry precipitation in the valley. There's, it's too early to look at anything for that. But I do want to point out that on this Thursday afternoon, the European model still likes a cold trough on Saturday, January 6th, into Sunday the 7th, into Monday the 8th. So this would be Saturday afternoon. Again, this dark blue contour is 540. That's 10, 540 millibars, the height. 543, 540. This is a 545 height. That's basically the polar jet trough dipping down over our area, allowing the colder air in the hemisphere to come down into us. That would pull snow levels down if that pressure height is correct to about 2,000 feet in the Cascades. Why is that a big deal? It's not unusual, but good grief. A 2,000 foot snow level is what you need to maybe put together a two to three foot snow event in the Cascades and jumpstart what's been a poor start to our snow pack. Okay, so that would be big news for our stored water up in the Cascades if that would come true. And as we get closer, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about if there's any signs of anything being colder down low. And before I do have the seven day to show you, and before I get to that, here's the updated NOAA National Weather Service January, February, March outlook. This hasn't really changed. It still puts our area, here we are right there, see us in the white. We're in the equal chances. So again, National Weather Service NOAA agrees with me that there's really no confidence to say, we're going to be dry, we're going to be wet, we're going to be normal. So you just kind of throw it out there, equal chances, right? So that's no difference. Still keeps us in the absolute bullseye. See the darker uh, shades here? The absolute bullseye of the warmest departures from normal in the entire country. Doesn't mean we're going to be sizzling hot, but it means the confidence is sure strong that we're going to continue to see above normal temperatures for January and February and then into early March. So... That is the latest. And with that said, I thank you for watching. Here is my updated seven-day courtesy of Hazeldale Tire Pros. This is Thursday afternoon. We're on track to get up to about 51 this afternoon. It's mostly in some traces of light showers. Tomorrow, we might have a little bit more noticeable shower activity, but still really light totals, 44 to 53, really mild. Rain picks up Friday evening overnight and a Saturday morning. That's when our next front comes through. Still looks to be about a quarter of an inch of rain. There's really no big change here from the seven-day I shared with you yesterday. And then I still have dry weather on Sunday and on New Year's Day. Um, both days look like there could be fog, which means all of a sudden, is the fog going to clear out? If it clears out, we'd have a chance to be upper 40s to 50. If it doesn't, we would struggle to be 44, 45, 46. That's Sunday and New Year's Day. Then this is a bit of a change. Showers picking up Tuesday afternoon into Tuesday night into Wednesday. And for those of you interested, one more graphic, and then I'll let you go. This is the updated from Hillcrest Ski and Sports Shop in Gresham. The updated um, snow level forecast. 
Notice any precip up there today is rain at past level. Tomorrow, any precip is rain. Eventually, as high as 8,000 feet, crazy high snow levels. Just light precip, though. Saturday, behind that front, snow levels do drop to 4,000 feet. But by the time we get down to Cascade Pass level, there's only going to be an inch or two of moisture left over for possible snow at most. So maybe there's an inch or so at government camp Saturday in the afternoon. Maybe there's not. And then we're back to dry on Sunday and Monday. All right. My weather site is portlandweather.com. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel if you have not done it. I hope you enjoy these videos. I enjoy making them for you. I'm meteorologist Rod Hill, and I'll talk to you soon.